Cars today have all sorts of fancy new engines. There's the hybrid, electric, the inline four, don't know what that is. But the engine that is most synonymous with power is the mighty V8. Now, I don't know where those newer engines were born, but this was the top secret delivery room of the famous V8. This hush-hush location was chosen to keep other car makers saying, I wish I had a V8. This building was once Thomas Edison's laboratory, part of his winter home in Fort Myers, Florida. 1928, it was relocated to Greenfield Village at the Henry Ford Museum, dedicated by Edison himself. Not long after that, Henry Ford used the building in a stealthy way to create his last great innovation as a car maker, a powerful V8 engine cast as a single block mold, something that had never before been achieved. The Henry Ford's curator of transportation, Matt Anderson, took me through the journey of this game-changing design that began in 1929. What is this car? It's a 1932 Ford, and it was the first affordable automobile with a V8 engine. I'm guessing the engine's pretty important here. The engine is the big deal, absolutely. What is it? It's a V8, so if you can imagine an engine with the cylinders inside, with the pistons inside that go up and down and provide the power for the engine, these are arranged in a bank of four on each side, and they come together to a common crankshaft to form a V-shape, the V8. The more cylinders you have, the smoother the power will be on the car, and the more horsepower you'll have. Ford didn't invent expensive V8 engines, but stiff competition forced him to innovate ways that could bring more horsepower to his cars for less money. Chevrolet for 1929 introduces a six cylinder, which is two more than what the Ford Model A has. And is that a big deal? It is a big deal because Chevy promotes this six cylinder engine as a six at the price of a four. So basically they're saying more power for the same price. Ford set out to one up Chevy by engineering an eight cylinder engine that would be cheaper than a six cylinder one. Working secretly with engineers in Edison's Fort Myers lab, Ford finally found success in 1932. Ford's big breakthrough is to cast his V8 engine as a single unit. Other manufacturers were producing V8s, but you'd have the crankcase down at the bottom and then the cylinders as separate pieces, so you could have three different pieces in this. More pieces means more production, more people, more cost. Ford got rid of all of that by casting the whole thing as a single unit. What's with the Swiss cheese design? All of these holes are your cylinders. Your piston would go inside there. So this is an engine. This is the basis of an engine. Yes, there'll be more parts that go into it, but this is the heart and soul of the whole thing. Ford's V8, called the Flathead, was a smashing success. It was a top seller for 22 years. It's still a favorite engine for hot rod enthusiasts today. Able to reach speeds up to 75 miles per hour, these fast Fords allegedly caught the attention of some notable gangsters of the 1930s. These letters were sent to Henry Ford and they were written by, or people who supposedly were, Clyde Barrow and John Dillinger. Two names well, familiar. Clyde Barrow as in Bonnie and Clyde. Absolutely. Dear sir, while I still have got breath in my lungs, I will tell you what a dandy car you made. I have drove Fords exclusively when I could get away with one. And he really means get away with one. It's literally true. Peering into one of the first ever 1932 V8 blocks left me with one lingering thought. Gives me a whole new level of respect for Swiss cheesemakers. That's right.